Hey guys, um, I'm back with the Circuit Hedron Video Podcast. One second, I adjust this tripod so it doesn't fall over. If you know how unstable it is with the past videos. Okay, so this is an electronics project I have. You're probably wondering why I have random boxes, spark plug boxes. Um, I think this is from a tie I had. Anyway, this is an electronics project I just did. Um, since I'm taking a lot of road trips this summer, figure. You know, those iPod chargers they have that, um, you know, they're really expensive. The car iPod chargers. And we had one and it got stolen. So I figure, rather than let my parents or me pay the money, I build one. So I'll show you what I did. Okay? As you can see, this one could charge two things at one time. These headphone ports aren't connected to anything. Um, I, I really, I have no need for them because the car, you can plug it into the car and it has a stereo. So no need to add an amplifier here. So I just left those untouched. Anyway, both these USB ports can charge any device over USB. So starting with the connectors, this is the first thing I had. This was an old um, cell phone charger. I'm not going to mention the brand because that would violate YouTube standards. It's kind of stupid. Anyway, I took it apart and inside it, I'm not sure if that would come apart, right? Anyway, it's hot glued together, but I just undid that. Inside it, I just left this to... Right here, there was a switch mode power supply. Now I'm going to say for this project, before I show you, I use a linear um, voltage regulator. That works, but it gets very hot because charging two iPods at once could do almost an amp. What you ideally want to use would be a switch mode, but I didn't have any. So anyway, right here, there was a switch mode power supply. I took that out. I connected the two negatives together to negative wire in the existing wire. The positive I connected to a fuse. That fuse blew because I shorted it out, so I just soldered that to another fuse. Anyway, you only need one fuse. I had like six amps, but not sure it mattered. Soldered that to the po positive wire. Then just glued it all together. You could use tape or whatever, but it's, it stays together pretty well. So you can see it's, you know, not too bad. Then ran it into a cardboard box. I figure nobody would steal a cardboard box. And if you're on watching on YouTube, then you don't know where I live, I hope. If you do, you're really a stalker. Anyway, inside you can see I have a lot of unused space. In This is the cable with the power coming in. It's connected to a 7805 linear voltage regulator, which is on one of these really big monster, uh, typically used for heat sinking MOSFETs. And it's a 7805, so it does 5 volt regulation, okay? So that 5 volts goes out to this, which is a little LED. I'm not sure if you can see, but... That right there is an LED. That's just a power indicator. What I plan to do is add one of those analog panel meters, but I haven't done that yet. Anyway, the power and then the ground just goes to the ground of the LED. So now we have a nice clean 5 volt signal, and it goes to this board right here. So let me take a zoom in on this board. And hopefully it'll focus. This camera hates to focus. Yeah, that's enough. Okay. Uh, I give up. You'll just have to settle with the non-focused. Anyway, this is the USB plugged into it. And you can see here that I have the 5 volts going to the two power lines. Now, since Apple really doesn't like people building their own, or probably they don't mind that they, so much, they just don't like the third-party companies, you have to put a specific... Um, you have to put essentially like, I think, 2.5 volts about on the data lines. So... Since I have two, since I have two data lines for each USB, that's four data lines in total because I'm running two USB. Then I just have two voltage dividers, one for each USB, so both data lines on each USB port get connected together and then connected through to the middle of this voltage divider here, which gives about 2.5 volts. Okay, I forget the resistor values, but just f and they're reasonably high. They're like 50, 50 kilo ohms, 50 Ks, I think about. So you want reasonably high, but that just lets the iPod know that it's okay to charge. So then, I have that connected to this box. This box is all glued shut. But essentially, all I did is I took the, the USB board from a computer, and then that just had these nice wires running off it, which had these ends connected up. So you can see, it's a really simple project. Just, in essence, take an old car charger, take out the switch mode power supply, unless it's already a 5-volt power supply rated for an amp. In that case, leave it, just install an end, a USB to the end of the cable. But if not, take that out, just run some fuse and a wire, so you don't blow up your car. Two, 
a linear voltage um, regulator. I have a video tutorial on those. Put it on a nice big heat sink. Send that over to a board. Put the 5 volts in ground to two USB lines. Um, can be a USB jack, any what you want. And then on the um, data lines, put 2.5 volts. 2.5 to 3.3. Um, the higher the voltage, the more current it will draw. And then if you want, add a power LED. And that's it. That's how to build your own um, USB car charger. Um, it'll charge phones. It'll power anything over USB. Just like, um, it'll even power a mouse. Just don't expect anything exciting to happen. But, but like those fans or Nerf guns or whatever that powered over USB, this will power them. So it'll power anything. So that's simple. And you could replace this with... Um, one sec with one of these, uh, one of these wall warts if you wanted to make a home wall charge. You could replace it with a 9 volt battery if you wanted to make it battery powered so you could potentially go anywhere. Or if you wanted to really get fancy, a rechargeable LiPo or Lion battery. Then add the charging circuit in here so you could then, um, plug something into the USB plug something into the USB port, drain the charge on the Lion battery, and then using the other USB port, plug that into a computer, and then charge it. So, like, what I mean by that is, oh, yeah, so, you could do that. One really helpful tool in testing this, though, you want to make sure that you're getting 5 volts on the USB, on the power lines to the USB, and about 2.5 to 3.3 on the data lines. So, one thing I did was, this has been extremely helpful. Rather than testing in here, I figured if there's a short in the wire and I test on the board or on the regulator, I won't run. So what I built is this plugs into the USB. So if you get the USB, what I do to test it is I plug it in, right? And then on the other end of the cable, I've cut the cable, tinned all the leads. So right here you have the shield. I just left the shield disconnected for this design because there's no data being passed. You can connect up your multimeter to the positive and negative, check the 5 volts. And you can connect up your multimeter to the data lines and check that they're getting the correct voltage. So, all in all, this is extremely helpful for um, testing. And then also, the power light, just making sure it comes on. Because, you know, in the car, you don't usually have a multimeter. Although, it's handy. Thank you for watching. Um, bye.